Hello and welcome to Build Series Sydney. I'm your host, Annie Clayton, and joining us in the studio today, DJ superstar, producer, singer, Havana Brown, who has a brand new music clip out, but at the Build Studio, we have a sneak peek. Let's check it To Build, Havana Brown! Hey! <laughs> How are you feeling? How are you doing? I'm feeling really good. Yeah, I mean, on the way to the studio, I was really excited to hear all day. Oh, were on you? On the radio. And, uh, oh, you heard it on the radio. On the radio. So okay. if I was excited, how does that make you feel when you hear it for the first time on the radio? Uh, yeah, I heard it for the first time on the radio yesterday. And yeah, there was a bit of squealing. I'm like, obviously on Instagram, you know, posting yeah. it. Um, yeah, no, it's really, I've, you know, like, look, it's a... It's always exciting when people are showing love to the record because mm. it takes – it's not that easy to go into the studio, spend so much time and then, um, you know, you're obviously hoping everyone loves it. And mm. so when you get a good response, uh, it's literally the best feeling in the world. And so then picking up the song so early and playing it hard, it's really – it's been – it's been amazing. And I heard that this song was almost not going to be a thing. I, I, th I heard that it was actually, it was the bass had to be moved around a little bit. Well, uh, yeah, funny enough, like we were in the studio. Mm. Uh, well, actually, this is my session, st uh, second session of the day. So it was about 2 a.m. <laughs> and I'm in the studio. There's a lot of drinks and, you know, I was a bit delusional. I was probably, probably a bit tired. And we started writing the record. It was the same melody, mm. same concept, but much ruder. Okay. So we had come up with just, you know, it was just ridiculous. We just were having a bit of fun and laughing. Mm. And um, basically we put it to the side. It was in the beginning stages of uh, writing the album. Okay. So I revisited about a few months later and then um, I heard the track and I was like, oh my gosh, this is really catchy. I love the song. It feels good. But it's too rude. Okay. So we're going to have to go back in the studio and properly write it and, you know, make it so it can be heard on the radio. Okay. <laughs> so what did Potty Mouth Havana Brown uh, have to say the first time around? Um... Well, look, I have a song called Big Banana and I released that. You could <laughs> okay. imagine it must Which is have about been. Fruit. Yeah. But yeah. 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 Oh, yes. <laughs> it's about fruit. <laughs> no. Um, so you could imagine that it probably. Um, it was something that I would like to do all day to someone particular. Oh my god! So it was definitely, um, yeah. I, I think it was. It was a bit of fun. It was. Yeah. It actually came from a lot of laughter, and I think you can feel it in the record still. You yeah. know, I feel like there's a lot of joy in it, mm. and um, I, I, I'm hoping people like. Ho, ho, I'm hoping people get that from the song as well. Yeah, a lot of two a.m. mojitos in that first version. Yes, yes. It, 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 by two a.m., it's like bourbon. Okay. <laughs> it's you know, but every like it's like um, sometimes you know when you're writing um, to get the juices going, you kind of like you kind of relax and so that you can free like be a bit more of a free thinker. Yeah, um, it was very free thinking in this song, but okay. originally, but <laughs> like yeah, so yeah, it was. It, it, I had a good time making this song. Okay, so is there a bit of a party vibe? When it comes to recording party songs, do do you think that helps when yes. it comes to the end result? Really, absolutely. I think um, even you know when I record a song like this, I don't like to go into a booth. Like sometimes people go into a booth and they're isolated. Mm. Well, generally that's what happens. Uh, but I like to bring the microphone into the studio with you know the producer and the writers you know there as well, so I can feel a vibe. Yeah. I hate being disconnected because I feel like it ruins how I feel and the energy in me. So Sure. I mean, you worked on this one with Prince Fox and, and Benjamin. Yeah. Uh, what was it like? What was that dynamic working with such uh, you know, established musicians? Like um, well, there was a lot of laughter. And, and, and you know what? That's how it should be. I think, yeah. I, I think the best songs have always been, well, for me, I can speak for myself, have always been from just good connection and, you know, creatively connecting with other people. Yeah. And um, it's not that easy. Not yeah. Because, like, what I think is a sexy song may be different to someone else yeah. what a sexy song could be. So, creatively, you need to be able to connect. And yeah. obviously, there was a great connection with them. I've been able to work with some talented people in Los Angeles. So, yeah. I'm 
I in my career, it, like on a whole, it's been such a like a, an amazing ride. So yeah, I mean, either you are really really easy to collaborate with, or you know the precise people to 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 do work with. Because yeah. I mean, if you you look at that incredible uh, reaction that um, the Pitbull mm. uh, Havana Brown uh, collab created, yeah. uh, I mean, w- compare working to with someone like Pitbull. Yeah to someone like Prince Fox and Benjamin. I mean, what's that like? Well, you know, Pitbull is uh, full of energy. Like, Mm. he comes in like this ball of energy and he has it all the time. And I thought maybe I am just seeing him in one particular setting and that's how he is in that setting. Mm. But I have been with him. I've toured with him here and in America, mm. and I've been on holidays with him, yeah. um, with his like with his friends and my friends, and <laughs> he is just so much fun all the time. But incredibly intelligent and has so much energy in him. Yeah, I mean he. Um, so he's Mr. he's World, very fast yeah, paced, Mister Worldwide, twenty four seven. Oh, you know? ab- absolutely! Like he's a really great guy, and so so <laughs> so is Benjamin and uh, yeah. Prince Fox. But yeah. um, I've gotten to know I got to know and hang out with Pitbull, just being casual and not working. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're they're great. Like I think I really respond well with good spirit and mm. good energy and. I guess I like to make music like that too. So, yeah. I, is, you know, I need that type of energy around me. Yeah, sure. Um, I want to talk about the video clip, which yes. we did just see. Yes. Uh, I mean, this is something shot out. I recognise that. It's a late night cinema out yeah. at the skyline. Oh, really? Black, uh, Blacktown yes. uh, outdoor cinema. Yeah. Which has that brilliant 1970s diner kind of yeah. feel. Yes. Um, and the style, I hear that, you know, you styled this clip and you did a lot of the work in, in making that clip uh, the way it looks. Well, I worked with Jean Collective. Okay. And actually, I don't know. I think I've always said Jean because I'm French, but <laughs> I, I think it's actually JN. I think it could be something else. They've t- corrected me every single time I've said it, mm. but I just c- don't believe that it's anything else but Jean because it's spelled J-E-A-N. It sounds and cooler as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they, they, I, I, I've worked with them on um, another clip as well and they're really fast and they're really talented, but I really wanted this clip to be super colourful and fun and interactive and have friends and... Um, just because it just to suit the song, but they found this location, and I just thought no one knew where this location was because I've never heard of it before. Obviously, mm. I'm not from Sydney, but I didn't know it was a popular spot. But yeah, no, I, I was like, it's just perfect. It has all the coloring. Um, you know, the outdoor cinema idea is so cool as well. I, mm. I don't know. I had a great time doing this video, and it's the first one I've done in Australia yeah. for a very long time. Yeah, so. and also the, the yeah the dancing is yeah. you know, quite unique. I do like that. The, yeah. the Havana wiggle, I'm going to call it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it can be. It can be the Havana wiggle. But, yeah, I styled it as well. I worked with – I got, you know, um, some great clothes from IMG. And I had a good friend of mine who's a great designer called Effie Katz. I wanted her uh, – I, like, asked her to make this – amazing pink outfit that was all just the same colour and pink trench with pink fur. Mm. And I had um, Zara make this great cowboy hat. Mm. Of course. <laughs> pink as well. So, yeah, I I think, um, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I had a great time. Because fashion seems to be another one of your loves. Of course. It, it, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And so when it comes to fashion, you know, who, who, who excites you? Uh, you know, what what is the... Um, you know, I love um, when there's some... Um, when you mix uh, femininity with masculinity. Like I like designers like Balmain where they're quite strong in the shoulders, you know, quite um, angular, but then sexy at the same time. And I love mixing the two of those. That's my mm. go-to. I'm, a, I'm not exactly that right now, but but I also love the 70s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I love my flares. I like my cowboy hats. I love, you know, I'm I like... Depends on the day, to be really. Yeah, <laughs> to I be mean, geez, this is like Pamela Anderson. Where, is that even the text from the Baywatch? <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, it could be. I mean, yeah, this is very, I guess, nineties influence there. Mm. There's a bit of a nineties um, comeback coming at the moment. I okay, don't, know, don't you think? I don't know. I guess I'm feeling it. I'm, everything nineties, pink nails, for goodness sakes, pink yeah. eyeshadow. 
I never thought that would come back. Oh, look, I'm taking, I'm taking notes. <laughs> in uh, two years, I'll be like, what was I thinking? I, I can guarantee you that. You, you just wait. I'm going to go copy. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm going to be pink. Uh, oh, I hope so. <laughs> eye shadow I think and it everything. would really bring out your eyes. Oh, stop it. You make me <laughs> blush. Now, you've uh, returned back to Australia because yes. you were living in the States for quite some time. Like eight years. Yeah, A long it? time. That went really fast. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, why, why now? What, what's, what brings you back to, to Australia? Um, basically, um, I'm lucky I can live anywhere. There was a choice to live in Los Angeles at the time and I had a great time there. But, you know, I, we, we, it's like we bought a house a few years ago and we want to build and you can't build into when you're living overseas. In Like I thought we could – this sounds really stupid and I should have known this but I feel like – I don't know anything about their building industry or how to build a house because yeah. I never have done it before. But I thought, oh, yeah, I can do it while I'm living in Los Angeles and build in Melbourne. You mm. can't do that. No. So we basically have come back and we're you know, looking to knock down and rebuild. Okay. So like, I know that's got really off topic of music, but that's yeah. basically what I want to do. And I so that's why I moved back. But Melbourne and Australia, it's just – I I have I feel really happy every day being here. Like yeah. it's just such a good vibe. We're really lucky. I've been ar- around the world, and yeah. Australia is the best place in the world wow. like, to okay. live. I think. Well, what was it like living in LA then? A lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. But you know, like it had its time. I just got over it. You know, mm. I still love it, but I don't want to live there now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we. <laughs> I was joking before about how you know Pitbull calls himself Mr. Worldwide all the, all the time. Mm. I mean, uh, looking at your touring schedule uh, over the past few years, uh, yeah. you do seem to be like a, a Miss Worldwide, uh, oh, you know, you because <laughs> you're, you'll be playing all across uh, mm-hmm. uh, Australia, uh, America, yeah. uh, Europe, you know, so it's mm-hmm. definitely taking you places. Yes, Do you definitely. think you're a good traveller? Are you a good tourer? Uh, yeah, I do think I Oh, yeah, kind of have to be. And I yeah. think, um, you know, one thing that always I would think about – is when I'm at an airport and my flight has been delayed and it's like, you know, 9 p.m. and you know everyone else is at home and finished their work and gone home and and you're at an airport and it's being delayed and you actually don't know when you're leaving Mm. and you're tired. Um, You know, the one thing I think about is um, when I used to work at like a – electronic electronic store like a retail you know and how much anxiety I had living um living there working there and how much I didn't like it Mm. and how much I dreamt of being in this very position (laughs) so I would think back at those times and it literally it it makes it all all right I'd rather be doing that and touring doing what I love yeah then be living like working doing something that i i hate and that i'm frustrated and yeah. not feeling fulfilled you know yeah and i mean the bad times yeah. you know being asleep on an airport mm. floor yeah. um I, I guess can only be way uh, completely blown out of the water by the good times like touring oh, with absolutely. beyonce you toured with absolutely. rihanna you know you I mean you've, you've gone yeah. with some of the biggest names in mm. the world yeah um, i mean i still like i still think back at that and go you know and I'm always like, wow, you know, it's it's it feels good to be yep. able to say that and that uh, to have done it, experienced it, and you mm. know the things that you can learn from that. Yeah, what did you learn from, let's say, the Britney tour or the Beyonce tour? Um, a lot. I think um, you know, touring with people like um, Pitbull and Enrique, uh, they. They enjoy every moment and they know how to have a good time. Even when it's stressful, when you're touring and you're tired, they s- they still um, are very positive and they're mm. dancing. Like after every show, they're dancing in the corridors backstage <laughs> with like, you know, some Spanish music. I just loved that. But also that you don't want to be um, – you don't want to be too, 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 like crazy, crazy, crazy famous. <laughs> Like, like I've seen it and, yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like fun. Yeah. And, and, and who are you referencing in that particular um, remark? I think a lot of them are super, super famous. And yeah. I think, that, um, you know, it's good to have had a background where you um, – I don't. I actually don't know how to approach this. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, you know what? You wouldn't want to be Britney famous. You yeah. know, like Britney famous is very famous and anything you say, do, it's worldwide news. Has that ever changed the way that you put yourself out there when you see what they go through? Um, 
No, I just know that to enjoy my, I, I mm. that I'm very lucky. Yeah. Like I, and I get to do, I, all I've always, all I've, all I've ever wanted to do was create, perform mm. and tour and be able to release music. Yeah. And I'm doing all of that and I enjoy it. And, you know, sometimes, you know, some things work and some things don't. And when they don't work, it's okay. You know, it's not the end of the world. It's, we're trying to, we're trying, I want to make people happy. Yeah. And that's a good job. Well, I did want to drop some stats on you. Yeah. Uh, 425 million global streams of your tunes, uh, 102 million video views, 3.4 million singles sold, and nearly 1.5 million social media followers. That's that is a lot of people. Uh, yeah. That's a, a lot of people being invested in you. Yeah. Um, so when you have so many people that mm. are very, very much smitten with you, I mean, h- how do you give back t- on less of a musical kind of level, but yeah. on that fan you know, interaction level? Well, it's definitely changed over the last few years, hasn't yeah. it? Um, you know, in the beginning, uh, you know, you were giving music and I was doing mixes a lot and mm. um, that's how you give back because obviously they were following me for my music. And um, for my DJing. But now I think, you know, you got you have to give a bit more of yourself. You know, it's a lot – I think it's it's a, it's a bit more difficult if you're more into the creative side, you know. it's You're revealing a lot more about yourself. Mm. Whereas back in the day it would be about – the only way for people to connect with you was through the music. But now it's not just the music that they yeah. want to feel connection with. They want to know – much more about you in your personal life. Yeah, definitely. Um, now, speaking of putting yourself out there, yeah. uh, I guess there is no uh, greater way to put yourself out there, uh, warts and all, uh, than by going on, I'm a celeb, get me out of here. Yeah. Uh, that is a very uh, in, in-depth in look uh, yeah. at what it's like to be a celeb, I guess, uh, stuck on an island. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> so, a little while ago, yeah. uh, of, of all the funny friendships to be come from that show yeah. you and Shane Warren the king of spin I, I mean, know right word. I know like yeah I just he's such a great guy he's, I I love him like, do, you still, do you still talk to him yeah all the time yeah. all the time he got me into poker <laughs> like now I'm like such a poker player of course like, he did oh I love it yeah he, no he's a great guy and not many people know that he's just a genuinely great guy. I think they know about all these hookups. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Each to their own, you know. Like he's a single man; he can yeah. have fun, you know. Like I, I that doesn't bother me. Um, I just think he's a great guy. Okay, yeah. now, um, rather than go down that line and ask you more questions about the King of Spin, <laughs> um, we do have lots of questions, Q and A's, yes, uh, coming in from people watching online. Okay, so someone actually started this question with a disclaimer, which I think is quite cute. Um, a bit off topic. You have amazing skin. What's your daily skin? hacks to keep <laughs> such a great complexion <laughs> okay first of all no dairy like what dairy is the worst thing for your skin thank you very much by the way um yeah i was having adult acne and i was like 28 and i'm like why am i having pimples at this age i was like teenage skin it was terrible and um and i tried everything under the you know everything that was listed on the net i was like mm. going through working out what it is and I would say, stop dairy, stop dairy, stop dairy. I was like, there can't be dairy. Dairy's meant to be good for you. I don't, mm. that's not true. Anyways, I was so desperate I tried it and that was it. All my pimples just disappeared like straight away. That was the first thing. And then it also in turn helped me with my ha- like with my allergies, sinus, um, no more like I, my bags. I, I always have bags under my eyes. <laughs> Trust me, there's always late nights, but it's not as bad anymore because yeah. obviously I don't have sinus issues. So it's um, that's a that's a like I that's a good thing to give up yeah. the cheese for. Like if you're getting pimples, it's, it get, it stops you from eating cheese. Trust me. Okay. Or well, yeah. can I have a question for me? Yeah. Do you drink coffee? Yes. <laughs> what do you have in your coffee? Um, How do you milk. have your coffee? I have oat milk in my coffee. Okay. But if they don't have oat milk, I'll do almond. Oat milk is the best, guys. Try okay. It. Yeah. We'll give it a crack. Yeah. Um, what was your big break in the industry? And when you, uh, when did you know that you'd made it? Oh, you never think you've made it. You're always trying to aim for it. But um, you're always trying to get better or do better. Mm. But um, I think um, my big break was when I did a charity event and the Pussycat Dolls were there. <laughs> and they were performing at this charity and um, they – well, Nicole Scherzinger and their manage- management, Jeff, 
saw me DJing and I was doing this thing. This is before I'd released music. So I was DJing but then I had dancers and I came out and danced. I'm so embarrassed to say this. is kind of like a bit cheesy but came out with two girls and started dancing, right? Yeah. And um, because I was trying to be different. Uh, Well, not trying to be different. This is what I just thought. Oh, let's make the DJ more of an entertainer. Yeah. And this is before DJs were releasing, you know, music. They weren't doing as much as a performer. And um, yeah, I did that. But they and they loved it. And they're Mm. like, oh my gosh, she needs to be on tour with us next year. Yeah. Because they were coming back to Australia to tour Australia, and they asked me to join their tour, and I. I opened up for them wow. um, around Australia, but then uh, with Lady Gaga. Wow! So that was, which, which is on po- like and amazing, incredible. And because but you've got a dancing background, you've definitely done a routine to don't you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, every girl has wished they were in that video clip, yeah. right? When I saw that <laughs> video clip, I was like, oh my gosh, who are these girls? I need hey, to be in sexist. this girl group. Or boys <laughs> wish that they were in that music clip. <laughs> that as well. is true. Uh, that is true. Um, but yeah, then um, from that tour, like um, Britney Spears's crew had heard about me and they were interested in having me join them on tour. And so Jeff, who is Pussycat Doll, was Pussycat Doll's management, um, like literally sent them a mix and sent them a little video of what I do. Because I there was no real, like, there wasn't Instagram or anything like that. So there was nothing that you could actually show, you know? Mm. Like, you had to, like, yeah. email it, <laughs> right? Yeah. And um, so he sent it over and Britney Spears approved for me to go on tour with her in Europe. Whoa. And I was like, what is going on? And I remember, actually, it was... It was off and on because I'd signed to – well, I I hadn't officially signed yeah. to Universal but I was yeah. in the process of the deal. And the, going on tour with Britney would involve them obviously mm. uh, but then it, like I didn't want – like it's a long story but it was off and on for a long time so I didn't know exactly that I was going to go on tour until the very morning of the flight. Whoa. So, like, literally at 5, 5 a.m., manager calls and says, get up, we're going on tour today. So, <laughs> we're leaving this afternoon, get whatever you need ready, we're going and we went and we flew to Paris and um, literally that night I was performing in front of 40,000 people in a Bercy. Wow. Bercy Arena or Stadium. Incredible. Yeah. That's yeah, it, that's it was unbelievable and that's when I kind of went whoa this is this is big and yeah. you know DJs didn't tour with artists at that point they always had a performer like a singing mm. performer it was just me DJing at that point I hadn't released We Run The Night you know so it was, yeah yeah and to go back it was literally that first time dancing on stage and that could have yes. been what got you this yeah well in- incredible it, yeah journey with yeah many, absolutely many absolutely and well obviously the djing part as well yeah. <laughs> i'm not that great a dancer trust me um but i'm okay i can i can do it i can pull it off i did dance we, growing saw, we up. saw the havana wiggle it was ins- <laughs> it was insane like it was um it was definitely a, a, like you know it was meant to be i guess you yeah. know very cool. Um, I mean, that goes into this next question quite nicely. Uh, what's a bigger rush? Yeah. Hearing your song for the first time on the radio yeah. or performing in front of 10,000 people? Uh, um, um, well, look. Um, like, okay, I can I – compa- well, no, I'd be performing, I'd say, because mm. hearing on the radio, you're in a safe environment, yeah. you know, but when you're – like if I put it back to that first Britney Spears show and I was like – I couldn't eat all day. Mm. I was so nervous. I was about to vomit and like <laughs> – like it was, a, it was a round stage and I had to come up from the middle so they would elevate me and bring me up to the stage. So I was underneath the stage and it was 30 seconds. They're like 30 seconds till I'm about to go up. And I can tell you right now, I was I was dying. I was so <laughs> petrified. And can I a little little extra story? Yeah. Um, just before that, Britney Spears' dad had come into my dressing room and said, "Hey, I, I won't do the accent. I'm really bad with the accents. <laughs> um, you need to pep them up because you can hear a pin drop. Mm. They are so silent. There's forty thousand people out there, and." You can't hear a word. There's nothing going on. Yeah. So you need your job is to get them moving. And I'm like, 
I was already feeling the pressure. I was already petrified. Mm. And to hear that on top of it, I was like, and I'm 30 seconds before, I'm like, I don't know why I did this. Why am I doing this to myself? Like, yep. you know, like when you got just about to go on a ride. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're like, no, no, actually, I don't want to go on that scary ride. No, it was like that. I was like, I don't know. What am I doing? And then as soon as I got lifted up and I pr- pressed play on the first track, mm. oh, that was the best rush of my life. Wow. Like, that was incredible. It's it like overcoming a fear and do it when you, like, it yeah. went well. It, yeah. Like, I got them out of the seats and they were dancing and screaming and, um, yeah, that was that was definitely something a confidence builder. Builder. Wow, you yeah. made me feel like I was there. I was yeah. nervous just listening. Jeez. Oh no, I'm telling I'm you right now. Like when they're like 30 seconds, you're like, really? Uh, is it, <laughs> like, I don't know. I think I need to go toilet. <laughs> <laughs> nervous, please. Are you I need sure a nervous I should peak. go up now? <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So it was, a, it was a lot. It was really like that was amazing. That's yeah. a sensational story. Yeah. Um, and finally, from the Q and A's, yeah. uh, you worked with Rich the Kid. Yes. What was that experience like? I mean, that guy is. Yeah. Yes, he's a character. He's yeah. definitely a character. Yeah. You know, like I've gone from like the dance, you know, working with dance producers and artists and then going into the hip hop scene. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's actually quite a uh, like interesting story. I was in the studio working on Glimpse mm. and, um, and I was just going through hip hop songs that I currently like and I, I liked his song Plug Walk like, mm. and I was playing it just on my laptop and listening to it and listening to the lyrics and you're getting inspiration and like the producer was like, oh, do you, you like Rich the Kid? And he goes, oh, well, why don't I, I'll just call him up. I'm like, hey, what? Mm. <laughs> I'm like, you're going to do this? And he goes, I'll call him up and like, see, like I'll play this track to him, see if he wants to jump on. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Mm. I'm like, you know, sometimes like people say, will say things and it doesn't actually happen but he called him up i got on the phone my manager got on the phone and like yeah he goes i love the track i'll jump on it and wow. and that it was that quick but he didn't do it straight away obviously so you know you kind of still don't know if it's actually going to happen and yeah and that, that's and and like f- a couple of months later it did take a little bit a couple of months later yeah. he had, i had great verse it's such a good verse on there yeah. too i was so when i heard it i was like cuz you don't know if you're going to like it you know i'm not in the studio with him or he did it on his own and when I, when we got it back i was like bam well, yeah. uh, he killed it so you know he talked the talk and, and yeah. walked the walk yeah which is incredible yeah, i mean yeah i'm like that's pretty impressive isn't it yeah definitely i mean i mean you're surrounded by these people who seem to be you know kicking goals left right mm. and center so is it important for you to have others that might be a mentor figure or people that you would look up to or are you the kind of person that has to be your own hero, if you will? Uh, yeah, no, I think I'm the latter. The latter. <laughs> yeah, I like I like to try different things. I like to um, come up with new ideas. Or um, as far as a mentor, yeah, I mean, like I like I like to be surrounded by people that inspire me for sure. I like mm. people that are positive or you know are doing things. Um, that are excited about life or excited about what they're doing, mm. that to me is inspiration. I, I can't yeah. be around someone that's just uh, a like, drag. It's just a drag. Yeah. Like, you know, like everything's annoying. Like every they're mm. pissed off all the time. I just like we all have our issues, man. Like yeah, let, let's just put try. some positivity yeah, in the let's world. Just, do we have yeah. to concentrate on that? You know, like. Yeah. But um, yeah, no. But I do like to create something new yeah you know I I, I I mean i started djing when there was no females you know or you know started performing and like creating music and writing music and doing you know like i, li- I like to be mm. in there first you know yeah, or, totally oh towards the beginning i'm not saying first first but you know yeah sure yeah um and while we're talking about uh, you know putting positivity out there uh can you tell me a little bit about kids teaching kids yeah well, you know, basically it's a program. It's a good uh, a good friend of mine runs it too, Aaron Wood. Sure. Um, yeah, he has this program that he's been working on. I think it's like 20 years, 30 years. Mm-hmm. And um, basically at school they teach it like it's a peer-to-peer teaching. So rather than a teacher telling a kid to uh, a child what to do, it's about learning from each other and peer um, and it, it works. It's a much more positive way to learn. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's learning about the environment and how to look after the environment and um, them all going out and teaching each other. Wow, fantastic. Um, did you just get a text? Yeah. Uh, is, it, is that your phone calling? Uh, so feel free to answer it. Who's, uh, Call me mum. To be, is it your mum? Oh, my gosh, it is mum. <laughs> so I'm just going to take this for a, a moment. <laughs> hi, hi mum. How are you doing? Oh, 
sorry. Um, look, your daughter's in the middle of an interview uh, right now and she didn't turn oh, her phone I'm off. Sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, then. Okay, no, no, before you go, wait, I, wait, one question for you before you go. Um, yes? Are you proud uh, of your daughter uh, and how are you feeling about the release of All Day? Oh, I'm very proud of her, of course. I really like All Day. It's a really good song. Oh, I love like it. Sally, it's doing the hard it stays set. in my head all the time. Okay. I keep singing it all day. Oh my gosh! Yeah, this is really wholesome and cute. Um, it's been lovely talking to you, Mum. Uh, look, I'm going to pass you over to you. Wrap it up though, because we're in the middle of an interview. <laughs> Thanks, Mum. I love. Round of applause for Mum. <laughs> Lo- love you, Mum. I gotta go. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Oh my gosh, she does like, she's like, oh yes, it's a really good song. It's like really catchy. It's in my head. You yeah. know, I love her. <laughs> There's nothing cuter than proud mum, you know, <laughs> when you, you hear her. Um, Even my, sorry, my partner over there, my manager, he's like, he's like, yep, that's mum. That's, that's <laughs> definitely her. <laughs> um, I actually think that there is nowhere else I can go after <laughs> this. But before I do let you go, I mean, yeah. what's next? I know that you've got a gig coming up with Brody Jenner. Yes. Um, uh, but besides, uh, besides, that uh, Hall- the Halloween party, yes. which should be a little bit. Are wild. you going to be there dressed up in your sexy outfit? Of course I am. <laughs> um, I'm actually I'm actually playing myself at a Halloween party. So, oh really? Where um, are you playing? Obviously, uh, you want to play? I, 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 yeah, sure. <laughs> I can't say the name of the venue because it's got a rude word in it. But um, but uh, but what's what next? What kind of venue is that? Uh, what's next? Uh, you know, <laughs> it's uh, like off the top. <laughs> off topic. Okay, yeah. It's about you. What's um, uh, uh, what's next for well, Anna Brown? Yes, album soon. Yep. Um, we'll be dropping EP and um, and lots of touring. There's like sure. every weekend I'm out touring. So, you know, check my socials. I'll be there. Wicked. And all make right. sure that you come down if I'm in your city. Okay. Because. Well, um, thank and you. And listen to All Day. Yes. <laughs> uh, and if you are at home watching this, make sure you check out All Day. But a round of applause for Havana Brown. Thank you. Dropping in to the Build <laughs> Studios. Thank you so much, Havana. Yeah.